With the 1.5 patch for Victoria 3, a lot of nations have received some flavor. One of these nations is Valachia, which has some unique events and journal entries that allow it to form Romania a lot faster now, but it does have a lot more of a challenging start, with uh, poverty being one of the most uh, successful economic policies in this country. Hell, even up to modern 2023, some would say. But I digress. Today we'll be playing as this uh, soon-to-be Chad Lord of a Nation. Get it, Chad, because of the, the same flag? Anyway, don't forget to also smash the like button. If we get 6,900 likes on the video, your crush is finally gonna talk to you, but only after I release my uh, Vicky3 France video. So we get the like goal, I do the France video, and then and then the crush talks to you. That, that's how it works, okay? Just, just give me the like, man. Come on. And don't forget to also subscribe. I'm still trying to get to 190,000 subs by the end of the year, which is basically here so it's, it's not gonna happen, is it? Now, as you can imagine, Valachia has nothing. It's got <laughs> dog shit technology. I'm talking about absolutely nothing good over here. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, start researching stock exchange as well as uh, lathe for now. We'll uh, add more to this afterward. It's it's gonna be tough when it comes to technology in this run. That is for sure. We also have our journal entry here. Unite the principalities, which triggers once we have nationalism researched. Now a little bit of info about that uh, event. Essentially, we need to make sure we have good relations with all of our neighbors to. Uh, uh, make use of that particular event. That's why we're going to be improving with everybody around here. We're actually going to uh, make the Serbians our rivals so we get more influence points, but we cannot just yet because apparently... So we'll, we'll, we'll do that a little bit later and uh, we can get some extra Diplo points when that's available so that we can afterwards do the Unite the Principalities uh, mission or journal entry a little bit faster. Not to worry though, in this video we're getting the uh, achievement that you can now get as the Valachians. Now when it comes to the government, we have s freaking 47% political strength over here, clout for the landowners, so yeah, we're gonna need to diversify our uh, politics here. And after we did diversify, we have a few more uh, legislations we can pass. Of course, the most important one to pass first is homesteading. We're gonna do that. Of course, 47% opposition from the landowners is a guarantee that they will rebel. But not to fear, I'll show you how you can win that revolution and the next few revolutions after because in my test runs I had nine revolutions by 1850 as Valachia. Yeah, yeah, they, they tend to rebel a little bit as this. This is probably one of the toughest challenges I've done in a while, that's for sure. But no worries, there's a trick to winning all of these wars without too much uh, too much of a hassle. Now that we've uh, figured out our initial politics, we have no institutions, so once we get uh, rid of this, we're gonna try and get some schools, gonna try and get some health systems, System and basically just revolutionize our country so that it's on par with the rest of the world. A little bit weird is that we have legacy slavery, closed borders, traditionalism, serfdom, but we also have right of assembly. That is so weird to me. Like, oh, uh, you're you're gonna be a serf, but I'll let you assemble and talk to each other. That is, what? Not gonna lie, that's actually historical. <laughs> My country is known for having the right to assembly. Previously, it's one of the ways that we used to uh, unify the country, actually. We had something called uh, Mare Adonare, the Great Assembly, essentially, where peasants from all over the Romanian principalities gathered up and were like, yo, let's unify. And everyone's like, yay. And, and that that was, I, I joke not, that is how we unified, okay? I joke not. Clearly, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but the, the gist of it is basically that. Not, not even kidding, not even kidding. Romanians in the chat, in, in the comments, please let people know, that's true. Okay, now we have 990 authority, which is really good, so we're gonna set up a few taxes here like tobacco tax. Romanians do be enjoying a lot of tobacco even today. Some services taxes. We're also going to go back to our politics and we will be boosting up the industrialists. We want to be bolstering these guys as well as the intelligentsia so we get uh, all the smart peeps in the country and ruling the country. Road maintenance edict as well together with the um, resource edict and a few others I want to get down actually. I'm going to cancel the services tax. It's not really giving me too much. In exchange I'm going to give out the uh, education 
education access as well as the uh, greener grass campaign so we have basically all of the edicts here essentially all the edicts. wait i put up resources do we have any resources right now at the start we do have we have coal mines one sulfur mine a little bit of logging food industries as well we have a few uh ranches here we even have silk plantation this was added with 1.5 actually the romanian principalities uh during medieval times even were known for having silk plantations which carried up into modern times communist romania had some of the biggest silk plantations it was lost after the fall of communism silk wasn't the raised as much but during communism even in schools kids used to learn how to raise silkworms and uh schools was, would essentially contribute to the gdp of the country by having silk production it's weird but it is something that happened in the country can you imagine modern american kids being asked to feed silkworms in school i feel like 90 percent of parents would be making assemblies right now we are a part of the uh, ottoman market at the start since we are essentially a uh, protectorate of there or dominion i don't remember which one protectorate okay so as such we will make use of the ottoman market but take note as soon as we form the united principalities well after we form romania so it's like a little bit of a journal progression 10 years after you form the united principalities you form romania they will kick us out almost in every single one of my test runs they kicked me out and it crashed my economy because you need to build up everything from the bottom to the top to have a successful self-sustaining economy once you're out of the ottoman market that being said though until we get kicked out we're going to be taking advantage of the ottoman market using their goods and trying to uh, get a little bit of a gdp going for us with the ottoman market and then as we progress we slowly start building up that bottom layer so when we get kicked out of the ottoman market we do not collapse so let's set up first all of the uh, best production methods around that we can set up take note though even though we've set up uh, sawmills and all this tools in the ottoman market is a massive issue that's why i'm going to queue up five tooling workshops at the start but of course i don't have any construction sectors so before that i'm going to alt click two construction sectors so that after those are done we can uh, continue with the actual tooling workshops that are going to be required right and as expected the uh, landlords have started to rebel it's going to trigger it's actually going to trigger and they might even take all of our units if that happens not to fear i'll show you what you guys need to do oh no we have the rebellion and steiner no and we have no unotos it's fine you know why because we are a protectorate of the ottomans and as consequence they will side with us and crush the revolution for us this is in my opinion a little bit broken it's kind of exploit ish but i'm down with it because it's the only thing we can use to actually lift ourselves from complete poverty and from being the worst nation in the world we're going to be abusing the fact that we are a protectorate of uh, the ottomans to let them win all the revolution solutions for us all 10 of them that we're gonna have and we're gonna pass all the amazing legislation that's gonna make us one of the most modern nations with basically no economy 59,000 gdp i'm looking at you but uh, yeah because we'll pass those great legislations slowly we're also gonna be able to improve our economic output considerably to arms my boys and my boys i mean my ottoman overlord boys really yeah it's, it's they're my boys they're technically my boys just don't tell them about what vlad did a few years ago all right well that's pretty much it there you go we won the revolution awesome let's lower the interest group approval again uh we're gonna be uh, finishing this one tooling workshop and i queued up an iron mine afterwards so we currently have just two tooling workshops we'll keep it as this let's make sure we change this back to the right production method since it was uh taken unfortunately from us by the uh vile rebels the best part is that now uh even though the um landowners are back in control here well they have one percent cloud to be more exact uh they they don't have enough clout to rebel so they're gonna have to just suck it up and watch us pass homesteading with that juicy 10 percent success rate even though it's uh, up or down it will eventually pass unacceptable government tell me you're in romania without telling me you're in romania huh <laughs> yeah boy we're gonna queue up three more silk plantations because silk is gonna go up in price and right now there's a high demand for silk on the on the market itself plus it's fast building those sink pl silk plantations so we can make a little bit of a buck out of it essentially grow that gdp a little bit we're also going to queue up one textile mill for the same reason grow that gdp also let's change this because i forgot to change that paper mill essentially one of each here so we have a little bit of everything going on for us we don't completely collapse when uh you know when we get kicked out cotton plantation of course also so we get that extra fiber which is good for your diet eh i'm all about that diet boys all right we've also queued up here um banking as well as mass 
mass communication afterwards so we can get after the uh, nationalist or well, nationalism research we seem to also have a little bit of a uh, issue with paranoid slave owners wait what less than five percent slave okay all right i see what's up yep we need to pass uh legislation that bans this particular one we need to get this banned soon very soon so that's going to be the next one i'm going to pass after homesteading then and i've also switched over to iron frame buildings we should be able to sustain it for a while at least there we go it went down minus four thousand okay that is uh that is definitely fluctuating more than i was expecting it to so we might go back to just uh wooden buildings yeah i mean it's to be expected we only have one iron mine for now and we basically have picks and shovels to extract that particular iron from the iron mine that being said i'm trying to keep my taxation on medium taxes so i get uh you know so i don't completely destroy my uh, standard of living it's already pretty trash 8.5 i'm trying to keep it afloat if i can at least to also queue up another three uh, logging camps which is the max amount that we can actually queue up right now and what do you know a second revolution for the exact same freaking issue bro they really don't want to see homesteading do they this one's not going to trigger though it's got 63 support so it's not going to go above 63 hopefully it's not going to go above 63 let's see add an extra two iron mines to the queue since it's pretty expensive 10 right now for iron that's quite a little bit so change over to the newest production methods too all right so i've actually canceled my uh, homesteading legislation i'm trying to go for professional army for two reasons i want to appease the orthodox church and the second reason is that i was stuck with the homesteading i was getting uh, too low uh government so i wouldn't be able to progress with it as such i'll be trying to pass the other legislations and i'll either go for tenant farmers or homesteading afterwards after i've uh, passed some of the other legislations first right so i don't waste my my time otherwise right and i've also queued up a couple more iron mines here so we uh, get some of that juicy iron right now it's 10.2 for producing producing iron and once we have the uh, better production methods of atmospheric engine pumps it's going to ramp up significantly and there you go we even have consideration phase for the professional army that is really good all right i've also changed to the right production methods because we are a part of the uh, ottoman market we should be able to get most of those resources for these buildings even though we don't have those resources ourselves directly one uh, exception from that is the lead we don't have any lead to produce the uh, leaded glass so we're gonna stick with the forest glass for the time being and look at that we even have uh, some uh, movement for tenant farmers that is really good hopefully this movement grows even more so we uh so we managed to pass this out a little bit faster then and we also have adoption phase for professional army so that's good too albeit i'm not gonna use my professional army for quite a few years afterwards but it's good to have it better than uh having the peasant levies in my opinion in any case there you go you managed to pass it now let's see what else we're gonna go for i'm gonna go for dedicated police forces pretty good too since it lowers the uh state penalty from turmoil and radicals from standard of living and i think i can pass the schools after as well let's see great part is that it has 21 percent success chance because we uh the landowners support this that's why i'm passing these legislations now after when i uh, lower the uh, landowners influence it's going to be a little bit tougher i guess because most of the other interest groups do not care about the police and so on uh, very much i've started improving relations with the french and the prussians so right now the nations that have uh diplomatic interests in my area are basically all the great powers with the exception of i think there's one missing yeah i think all the great powers with the exception of the americans as such i gotta improve relations with all of them it has to be above a neutral so it has to be one relations essentially that's not too hard anyway to get right also went up to three construction sectors hallelujah we're getting places right at the pace of a snail but getting there don't worry let's see what is in high demand over here it looks like iron and coal are basically the main ones tools as well so we're on the right track we're gonna actually i'm gonna queue up some coal i only have four coal mines let's queue up one more and let's queue up two more iron so we have five and five i guess for now should be a-okay ish at least come on let's also get dedicated police force so we can get something else after let me check institutions we don't have anything yet after we get dedicated police force we're gonna try and uh, pass this up to level five since it's only 21 bureaucracy it's not so expensive since we only have the one state right kind of an advantage of us having just one state because it's a lot easier to manage stuff and mappy doesn't matter as much since you don't have any other secondary states for that mappy to you know come into play right oh my god 80 freaking two percent and you still didn't pass it come on <laughs> i'm getting you for flashbacks here of course whenever we build the cotton plantations uh, it takes up from the investment pool that right now has 632,000. so we're essentially building these for free kind of thinking to build one more construction sector let's go let's let's be a little bit greedy see if it uh, pays off or not all right there you go we got um some technology done as well as uh, the legislation now let's check this charity hospitals not so bad uh, this i'd love to ban though this i would absolutely love to ban let's see how it, if it works fingers crossed right and we got our very 
very first university in Valencia, Nois. Holy shit, we just went up to 158,000 loyalists? Why? Standard of living increase. Oh, did it? Was it below 8.6? I thought it was 8.6 this whole time. We're also building up uh, our very first fertilizer plant because we did manage to get the uh, soil enriched farming, which requires fertilizers. And we're going to be building more of these uh, farms as well. We want to get at least 20 of them in our country. So when we leave the Ottoman market, it's not going to be completely brutal as it would otherwise be. Wait, I just realized something. This guy is an abolitionist. Let's grant him a command. And now since he is the only commander that we have here, so the only other character that we have here, we might be able to make him leader of the landowners. The landowners right now are pacifists. National militia, colonial affairs. Okay, sure. Let's see. Let's see if, if we manage to. Boom. Shakalokos. Kick this guy out. Arrivederci. And... Oh, we got a jingoist. We got a jingoist. Okay, that's fine. That's not too bad. Bring him back in. Boom. Okay. And it's time to unite the principalities, boys. Press for the union. Boom shakalokos. Our declaration of union. Tots un wunu. All for one. Moldova shall become a junior partner of ours. And now we have the unite the principalities, which has been done. And we also have all for one. The South Bassarabian uh, retrocession. We're going to ask the Russians to give us this. And they did give us awesome. We also gave it in my Russia video. So uh, glad to see that Russia AI is on the same page. Anyway, now after 10 years, we can unify Romania. So we literally just need to wait for 10 years. That's it. And then we can unify Romania. Fairly straightforward. A lot easier than it was previously to unify Romania in uh, before 1.5 patch. But that being said, once we do unify Romania, the Ottomans most likely will kick us out of the customs union. We might be able to join the Russian customs union. So let's see what happens then. But we have until those 10 years to do all the legislation we want because we're not going to be a protectorate anymore and we're not going to have the Ottomans helping us in our rebellions anymore afterwards. Oh my god, these people are starving here. 4.7 standard of... That's the lowest I've seen in this game so far. <laughs> to be fair though, it's kind of accurate. You got 18,000 population with essentially nothing in here except a cotton plantation and a shipyard. What do you expect, bro? And yes, you do have to incorporate all of these states. You even have to incorporate Moldova after you form Romania from this event. It does not give you the states incorporated, which in my opinion is a little bit of a poo-poo thing. But hey, it is what it is, sadly. I hope that they patch this in the future and when you do form Romania you get this as an incorporated state would make more sense in my opinion it's hard to believe that I essentially have right now 19,000 pounds as my income considering I'm playing as one of the worst nations and we had like what 5,000 at the start of the campaign that is for sure progress boys all right boyos slavery has officially been banned about time <laughs> now let's see what other juicy stuff we're gonna go for oh my god 40% chance for what oh <gasps> Now, clearly, there's a lot more opposition for census suffrage compared to landed voting. So maybe we can go landed voting first, pass that a little bit faster, and then we uh, rebalance the interest of our population and the interest groups and then get uh, census suffrage later down the line. I feel like that might be the play for us here. Because honestly, I just don't want to have a repeat of the homesteading where I, w I lost almost four years trying to pass homesteading and it just didn't work, right? Nothing to fear for water to boiler is here, which gives us the condensed engine pump as well as the water to boiler itself and the rotor evolve so it is going to be one of the biggest things here there you go that's going to increase the amount of coal and tool consumption that we have by a lot so we need to make sure that we queue up some more coal mines and some more tooling workshops now i'm going to actually change to steel tools but to do that i need to get a steel mill i'm uh, i've queued up one after the current logging camp is done i've done that because right now in the uh market that i'm a part of the ottoman market there is not much steel to be going around. I haven't noticed any steel, so that means the Ottomans are not producing any steel whatsoever. I need to start producing the steel myself if I want to switch over to steel production method for the uh, tooling workshop to make it a little bit more efficient. Remember that end of the day, we only have so many people we can work with. We had 208,000 population left as the uh, Valachians to be working with, so we need to maximize the, uh, well, we need to make the most with the little amount of population that we have essentially. Oh my god, 
look at that productivity boys look at it we're getting so much monies so much monies we're probably gonna build a secondary steel mill aren't we right now we're building a uh, food industries because as you can see the game is having a semi stroke by telling us that it's getting an input of good shortages from groceries and ooh la la we got uh, Lando de Voting there you go we got 34% by the way yes yeah, support for the US industrialists so that's really nice as well traditionalism is gonna go screw itself let's go with agrarianism wait did we have interventionalism available i don't think we did 54 percent the support and 17 uh opposition so this is gonna pass really fast as well hopefully the ottomans are getting their asses kicked what i didn't even see this this is the conquest of tunisia by the british what wow talk about aggressive britain man now switching from traditionalism to agrarianism is also good not just because it uh, gets rid of the 15 percent reduction in mappy but it's gonna allow us to invest our investment pool and in more than just agriculture so right now we have how much investment pool we have 2.8 million in the investment pool so we're going to be able to use it I, I queued up some silk plantations and cotton plantations which is giving me a positive now as consequence to uh pay off my interest i'm going to do that for a while before i build any more industrial buildings but after agrarianism has passed we're going to be able to use it for a lot more than just that eventually the goal is going to be of course less affair that would be obviously the best one to have as our economic system even interventionalism would not be bad whatsoever actually holy shit 35 this is maintaining at 35 oh my god okay quickly gonna queue up one more that's it then i'm building farms i promise after i'm a farm boy and holy shit is there a massive demand for coal i'm gonna queue up five but i'm not gonna build five instantly i'm just gonna build one after the uh this the silk plantation unsurprisingly the brits have won and they've established themselves in the mediterranean significantly more than just having gibraltar and uh, malta yeah they've they've they're gonna be a rival to the french that's for sure all right boys the big moment is here awaken the romanian or as we say in romanian which is the name of the achievement too that we have here let me check it out there you go scroll is down yes hard achievement actually as a romanian nation form romania and directly own all romanian homeland states now we did form romania but we need to own all of transylvania which is our homeland states and dobroja as well we got to own so we're gonna have to end basarabia so we're gonna have to go to war with austria the ottomans and the russians now let's see when the ottomans kick us out we're gonna have to uh be on best buddies terms with the russians so we can join their customs union and we're likely gonna attack the ottomans first as they're the weakest ones to get dobroja then the austrians and then the russians austria likely when they're attacked by the prussians let's see we we have a, a white a way to go until then because we need to fix a lot of stuff let's incorporate moldova too now there we're at it and let's build up a government administration or better yet just get standardized filing cabinets works too boom shakalaka now that we got moldova we need to also make sure we have the latest production method clearly we need to do that first boom condensed engine pumps russia wants to enter a defensive pack with us sure i don't mind that russia thank you very much appreciate the uh, offer kind of funny but we are a protectorate of the ottomans and we have a defensive pack with the uh with the russians this is kind of historical actually what happened was we gained our independence from the ottomans in 1870 or 1871 i don't remember exactly during one of the multiple russo turkic wars there was a lot of them between the russians and the turkic in the 1800s in which the Russians took a lot of territory from the Ottomans and it was more beneficial for the Russians to have Romania as an independent nation rather than have it as a puppet essentially or protectorate right of the Ottoman Empire that being said we were at the same time both a protectorate of the Russians technically we were a protectorate and we were a vassal of the Ottomans or a tributary of the Ottomans so yeah it was a little bit complicated it's it's a remnant of medieval politics let's call it right my worst fears have come to play but fortunately enough the russians are inviting us to their customs union so we're not going to completely collapse we have become an independent nation though the ottomans have canceled their protectorate over us they always do this in every single run just a matter of time after you've gained uh, the moldovian lands almost always at the same time you can join the customs union of the russians sometimes even the austrian customs union i recommend the russian one since it is a little bit bigger they have 53 million gdp and they will be uh, able to help you out against the ottomans when the time comes even against the austrian when the time comes so you can essentially get how many one two three four five six states that you can build up before you get the bus arabian states from the russians later down the line right do that 
quick old Romanian backstab, yo. Oh my god, I'm so happy I finally got agrarianism. <laughs> Took me only 20 freaking years to get rid of the freaking starting traditionalism. Yeah, it's it's not easy as this nation, guys. That is for sure. Take that into account. All right, we could do wealth voting or we could also try and get rid of serfdom and go for homesteading. Screw it. I'm going for homesteading. Wait, what? The Ottomans want to enter a defensive pack with me now? Are they rivals or something with the... Um, no, they're not. Okay, we can, we can have a defensive pack with both the Ottomans and the Russians in that case. I guess it goes without saying now that our main target is actually going to be the Austrians first. So that was a big change of plans. Dude, I was so close to getting this and I got a revolution. Are you kidding me right now? And of course the revolutions got most of the units in Moldova, but luckily enough, I do have the Russians supporting me. So we should be okay with this now. Feels bad though. Like I, I was so freaking close to getting from consideration to ascent. I just got really bad RNG that it didn't pass to ascent. I have to fight the rebels sadly, but let's go. They got hundred percent on this front because they're not even defending against the Russians, so this should be a very, very quick war. There you go. <laughs> Look how fast they're advancing into the uh, rebel sides. Uh, and we won, basically. <laughs> we already won. You guys have no idea how happy I am to see homesteading. My test runs, almost all of them, I got it by 1840. 1840! Took me 18 extra years to get it, man! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Why has it happened when I'm actually recording? Alright, per capita taxation is also a no-brainer considering we have 60% endorsement for this. So we start with 33% success chance and no Nobody's opposing it, so we should really fastly get this enacted then. And yes, we're building a few universities as well, since uh, we want to catch up with technology and, you know, it's slow because we're a very small nation with a very small GDP, unfortunately, for now. Oh, my brother. There's 1.2 thousand shortage of clothes, 800 shortage of furniture, 700 of fertilizer in this market. I can literally become ridiculously rich by just spamming textile mills. That's it. Nothing else, just textile mills right now. Let's build five of these in Moldova. Building them there because I don't have the infrastructure in Valachia and I haven't researched the technology just yet. Actually, I think it might be the next one after dialects. Yes. We quite literally doubled our economy now from uh, passing the per capita taxation. Let's go back to politics. And yes, boys, we have the holy divinity of industrialist intelligentsia in charge. They might not have a great government. It is in fact an unacceptable government, but it is a government that's passing all of the legislation that I want them to pass. So I'm happy with it. Let's get a education system up next even though it's uh not the best one which would be public schools better than nothing to get religious schools right this is big boys this is really big because uh railway is going to help us uh, get back our market access so let's build two over here and one in moldova now i also was thinking about something i'd love to see a chain of historical events that lets you bring the historical romanian first king carol the first that unified well he didn't unify but he gained the independence of romania from the ottoman empire Empire. Even Alexandrian Kuza, the unifier of Moldova and uh, Valachia. I'd love to see some events revolving around those guys. It's not that difficult to script that in, and I think it would make a massive difference to make these little schnapple dupes on the map a lot more interesting to play as. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think about that. I like to see a little bit of historical stuff in the game as, if possible, and if it's not too difficult to script in, you know? We're also snowballing super fast now. 74,000 national revenue on medium taxation is really not bad boys. Let's grab a quick look-see around the world. Prussia seems to have not yet unified the German nation. It's a lot more difficult than the current patch to unify Germany, to be fair, so I'm, I'm not surprised that it hasn't yet unified. The British and the French are essentially splitting the world between them around Africa and pretty much everywhere else. South America is a big blob of Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, and everybody else here. I notice Argentina and Chile really struggle with colonizing in the recent patch as well. It's a lot harder for them to actually colonize these lands for some reason. The U.S. has not yet pushed into the West. Okay, that is very surprising. Usually by uh, 1860, they have all of the historical U.S. borders, I guess. Russians unified, the, well, wipe, w wiped out the, the Kazakhs and so on, but they haven't expanded into the uh, stands yet. Japan's basically not yet uh, opened up its borders. Still isolationist. Australia hasn't yet unified, so not really much has uh, happened, except a little old Romania having become a nation and getting ready to schnapple do people. Check it out. G GDP wise, we are above the Portuguese and the Dutch and we're right below the Egyptians about to go above them too and above the Bavarians. So we've we've come a while. That's so cool, man. We have Caile uh, Ferrata Romune, which is Cefere, which is the national uh, railways, uh, railway company for Romania. I'm, I'm so happy to see that in game. I, I didn't expect to see that. It's pretty good bonus too. 5% infrastructure and land trade capacity plus 15. But for now, I'm actually going to get the radicals from standard of living decrease because I also want that bonus for the textile mills since uh, 
textile mills are where most of our income is coming. Still, we are taking advantage of the uh, lack of 1,000 of uh, clothes on the market. Same goes for the fertilizer so and furniture. So we're going to build a lot more of all of those up next to focus on that economy a little bit. This is honestly ridiculous. Our productivity is 40 pounds. <laughs> well, the global average is 12. Holy schnapps, dude. Oh, man, this is just delicious to look at. Now, I also want to switch over to nitroglycerin, even though it has the mortality because I need uh, I need less population to be working in schnapple dupes because look at this. We only have 150,000 people left. So we're really losing uh, peasants massively. We need to get uh, some better production methods around. Before I do that, I need to get some explosive factories on because the Russians don't have any for some reason. I rushed a little bit to get the uh, secondary company because I need the fertilizer plant throughput. Now, this is going to be really juicy because we're really lacking on fertilizers and we also don't have much of a population left, unfortunately. 60,000 peasants and we're trying to uh, get better production methods. We're also using a lot of uh, water tube boilers and so on. We need to research Rotor Evolve to get more pops now. And yes, I know, I need to start attacking the Austrians. The thing is, I'm waiting for the right moment. I cannot just be going in there, guns blazing when I don't have the support of the great powers to help me out in that war because I only have six units. They have <laughs> 201. I need to build up an economy, then we build an army, and then we march in together with the Russians and whoever else is willing to help me out. Sadly, with the new patch 1.5, small powers have a lot more of a difficult time actually fighting against the big boys unless there's some specific events that help them out, which in this case is not the case, really. Now we're talking. We got Steam Donkey, so that's going to be a lot of population freed up from uh, the mines. Look at that. 10,000 manpower from uh, the iron mines, another 3,000 from here, another 20,000 from the coal mines. So these are people that we're going to be using for the other production methods instead of just wasting them transporting or whatever the schnapps they were doing here before, right? We also want to get nitroglycerin, of course. Um, I don't have explosives. I don't have enough explosives. So until I finish getting more explosives, I'm not going to get it. I only just got the nitroglycerin for the sulfur mines temporarily, I guess. Oh my god, I gained 40,000 pounds the moment I went to interventionalism. Why is that? Is because now we use from the investment pool our money to build even manufacturing industries like the ones we're building right now. So we have 16 million pounds that we're going to be using to actually explode our economy now. So we're set from that perspective. We do need population though. So I'm going to set up no migration control. I'm going to push for this legislation so we get pops to settle in here. We have actually a pretty decent uh, standard of living and we're going to improve upon that as well. So we attract more population to settle in, grow that economy even more. And I'm going to get ready for the war with the Austrians very soon actually because they keep getting revolts and I'm pretty sure their population is fed up with them. So if I have say a good 50 units, I might even do some damage to them alongside the Russian army, right? Looks like we have a uh, booming industry, eh? That's why we're getting all that juicy extra throughput for uh, various mines. And that also means we have to uh, build more explosive factories. That's why we queued up an extra four. I'll click those actually. Knowing how to manage your country and how to best uh, use your production methods makes all the difference in this game. I mean, let's look at the situation we have in 1879 for a second. We started as one of the poorest countries in the world as Valachia. We unified Romania. We've got 18.3 million GDP, which is close to the Canadians and the Brazilians. Some of the biggest nations in the game. And we only have two states and partial bits of a third state over here that is basically not even worth mentioning. But with just two states and five million population, which has been steadily growing because of immigrants, because we have 13.2 standard of living, and that's also increasing. We're trying to get up to uh, level four our health system, which is going to give plus two flat standard of living, which is going to be amazing, let's face it. And we also just got the home affairs, so let's uh, get that to level two as well. Now, this is, of course, a result of us using the best production methods. If we check over here, quite literally all of these we have set to rotary valve engines, pretty much the best production methods in all of these, including railway transportation. So the thing that really saved me is the fact that I'm using every single one of my pop
population uh, to produce stuff, not to transport stuff. I have uh, railway transportation set up. I've got steam donkey set up. Oh, this one doesn't have it. There you go. That's an extra how many population we say probably like 12,000, which we can put to work. Hails to the yes. Now that does mean we have some shortages for transport, which is why we went for steam trains as well as a steel passenger carrier that offers more transportation, but we still need some. So we're going to build a few more, of course, in uh, Valachia and in Moldova. We don't have much of an army, but we will uh, eventually get down to it and we're going to start building up our army so we can attack the Hungarians. I mean, the Austrians, which apparently have um, a revolution. Oh, oh, now that that actually makes a lot of sense. That that means we might be able to liberate, say, Transylvania in two states. OK, there's a four percent chance that they would do this, brother. Don't get me so excited here. Don't get me so excited. Come on. Would they really? I need a strategic interest in South Germany first, though. OK, let's get that first. We'll try and see if we can get Transylvania after. Uh, also, budget wise, guys, we are on very low taxation and we're getting one hundred and eleven thousand again with two freaking states, man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> we only have two uh, two uh, consumption taxes as well. Actually, I'm probably going to remove this one. Yeah, I don't need that one. That's going to increase our standard of living a little bit as well. And we're paying maximum for our government wages as well as we're going to do the same for the military once we start the ramping up our military production to get ready for the wars with the Austrians. I'm also kind of using this uh, this run as a means of seeing how I can maximize and how far I can get with just two basically states, not even full states because Moldova is missing the northern bits. This year is also a part of Moldova, which is like a good 600,000 population. So if we get the entirety of Moldova, it's going to change things massively. Now we are, of course, uh, benefiting a lot from being a part of the Russian market because we are building stuff that the Russians are not building and they are in need of. So that means textile mills, furniture workshops. We do need to ramp up our tooling workshop production as well as the uh, coal mines, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is up to 51 now. Oh my God, I need to actually boost this up a lot then. Yep, we need a lot more coal mines, boyos. And I think around 80 something, I'm going to start my war against the Austrians. I'm also going to try after the interest is done to see if I can get that 4% chance. Realistically speaking, I could also just, you know, re reload the save game until they accept it. That's also an option, right? One thing that we are lacking though is uh, technology, 89 innovativeness. We can have up to 129. We're going to build that up. Don't worry. But the truth is that if I invest all of my uh, population into universities, it might cause issue. Actually, you know what? Drew it, man. Let's uh, let's build four universities. Let's max out our innovativeness. Why not? Let's get those technologies that we deserve. And yes, we do have 4 million in gold reserves as well as 12 million in the investment pool. So we're A-OK -okay financially for a very long time. I've also kind of stored up all of these finances so that when I get the lands over from uh, from the Austrians, I will have the finances required to uh, build up those new states and bring them to the same standard that the uh, current states have right now. And when it comes to legislation, we could work a little bit on this. Commercialized agriculture is definitely what I'm uh, looking forward to get. Better than homesteading, that is for sure. We just got secret police, state religion. I'd like to change to state atheism, which offers 200 authority, which is a big deal. Basically the same like uh, religion, but it doesn't have the political strength for the Orthodox Church. So state atheism is by far the best out of all of these here, in my opinion. There seems to also be a lot of support for colonial exploitation. However, I'm not really that interested in getting any colonies as the Romanians, obviously. And seeing as we have very low pops, I uh, I would like to get the 5% extra of workforce ratio from uh, properly tied women, but not right now. Right now, right now, I'm going to see if I can become a republic. And if not, at the very least, try and go down to census suffrage or universal suffrage. Either one of these works for me. It's going to be a little bit tougher, though. Let's see, because uh, it's equal the amount of opposition as is the amount of endorsement for, for this particular legislation. All right, I uh, started a diplomatic play here to get Southern Transylvania. I'm going to try and get more. I'm going to try and get uh, Moldova as well. And maybe Northern Transylvania might be a little bit pushing it, but let's see. All right, let's see. We've got the Russians on our side. Unfortunately, Ching is on the side of the uh, Austrians. So that is... <sighs> the game works in mysterious ways, but whatever the case. Um, let's see what happens. The Austrians do have their war here, so there might be a chance we might be able to get this small chance, but still a chance, right? Obviously, I decided to do this since um, the 3% chance that I had to liberate uh, diplomatically Transylvania was not enough. Okay, we're actually winning because obviously the Russians are winning, not our troops. Our troops are as they were at the start of the campaign. I actually haven't done much to them, so <laughs> we still have skirmish infantry for that matter. Actually, what kind of troops do they have? Do they also have skirmish? They do also have skirmish. Okay, so it's not so bad actually the situation. And once we get the war goal here, we should technically be 
be able to um, to get passive war scorer, so it might lower their war support faster than our war support lowers itself, which means we might actually win this war. And they defaulted. Oh my god, they defaulted. Woo, shit, boys, they got bankrupt. They got bankrupt, they defaulted. Oh my god, dude, this is juicy. That was a really, really good timing right there. I, I, I knew that waiting for a rebellion to happen again is the right moment. Actually, I wanted to wait until the um, Prussians go to war with the Austrians for the leadership of Germany, but this works as well in my books. This definitely works as well. And look at that, their war score is going down a lot faster than ours is, so we're gonna win this war. Holy shit, we're gonna double in size as a nation. All right, let's go, boys. Minus two war support. We're at 20. Come on, give me the lands I want. Give them to me. How is it going on the on the Qing front here? So it's pretty pretty much a stalemate, isn't it? I'll let the Russians do all the work here, though. I'm not gonna even bother to attack these. Maybe Qing is gonna peace out by themselves. <gasps> oh, 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 boy, we are doubled. We have da 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 doubled. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. I cannot believe this. We're so close to getting this freaking achievement, dude. We're so close. All right, how many more provinces? One, two, three, and four. That is it. But now we got eight million population and we got three. Well, we got two extra big states and the entirety of Moldova. So we have so much more space to expand now. Uh, and we have so much more potential GDP that we're going to be growing from this little schnapple dupe that is Romania. I'm so excited right now. We're still going to attack the Austrians a second time, of course, after we're... Uh, um, well, after we're ready for it, of course, which is going to be in a while because we have a lot of work to do in these states now. First off, let's incorporate both of them and let's build up some more government administration buildings because we're going to need more to um, get that extra bureaucracy for those institutions and such. Let's also make sure we have the production method for all of these over here. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Baluby, you can just go to your government here and you click reset production method. <laughs> yes, that is true. That is actually true. But sometimes when I do that, it doesn't reset to the right one for some reason it kind of pisses me off so i like to personally go through every single one of them and make sure that they've all reset to the right production method but that's just me i'm weird like that make sure we have some uh, railways in these lands because we're gonna have a shortage of transportation because uh all of these new provinces have no transportation whatsoever the austrians surprisingly are way more backwards than the romanians in this timeline at least so until i get those particular um railways in here i'm actually going to reset these production methods from railway to road carts otherwise it tanks any sort of production i might have in these two provinces right now and see what i was saying before we will need that money to uh fix the situation in transylvania once we get it so that's why i kind of also stacked up on a little bit of reserves beforehand right here is why you want to have all of your states incorporated guys because check it out you get per capita taxation land taxation you also have all of your government modifiers affecting unincorporated state so because it's at 69 percent right now incorporated we get a percentage or a fraction of the uh, modifiers once it's uh, at 100 we get the entirety of the modifiers as they are and we have a little bit of a revolution to maintain monarchism but it's uh half the country and uh, i'm fairly certain the russians are going to help us out to deal with this so i'm not really too worried about it hey look at that russia sided with the with me without having to even ask them they sided with me so that's just what good friends are for right there once more greater russia to save the day because uh, most of my army was actually in the moldovan side so if the russians didn't help i would have struggled a lot more to win this war <laughs> let's let's face it let's say it how it is okay can we also take a moment to appreciate the fact that this is a religious revolt everybody be having like aristocratic revolt we be getting the religious ones boys <laughs> Oh my fucking god. They deleted half of my fucking buildings in Moldova. The rebels deleted half of my build. I'm so fucking pissed right now. Alright, so the great part is that now we have lead mines that we can build in uh, southern Transylvania. Lead was an issue for us because before we didn't have it. So now that we have it, we can switch over to crystal glass production method, which intakes lead but produces but produces a lot more glass as a consequence. And we have just become a presidential republic. Together we got Jean, Jean Nicole. Okay, cool. Uh, that makes no difference. But now we have Mr. Emilian as our first president, Emilian Dinotto Gusti. Okay, that is definitely not a Romanian name. What the hell, man? Why did we get our first Romanian president, an Italian as the first president? I mean, what? The good side of it is that now, check this out, boys. We have significant endorsement for legislation that we kind of want to pass. And by kind of, I mean really want to pass. 34% for properly tied women. Hail to the yes. Plus, check out the amount of extra pops. We got 600,000 people we can put to work. Oh my god, I'm going to get 40. 
40 million GDP with five provinces, four provinces and a half. We also can now properly specialize states. So I'm going to have one state have 51 of a particular building. The other state have 51 of the other building. This way we get the maximum of 50% production throughput from having 51 buildings in that particular state. And then we add the edict on top of that. So we go up to 70% and we add the year companies on top of that. So we can have up to 90% production throughput in every one of our states if we if we play our cards right. And then when we get the entirety of Romania, we're going to have essentially more GDP than Germany has if we manage to play our cards right here. Have to say that as a Romanian, it, it warms my heart to do this playthrough and give Romania a little bit of justice in the process, you know? Make Romania the nation that it should have been all along. Hell yeah, boys. More people for the workforce is exactly what I need. Ooh, 80% endorsement for atheism. Oh my lord, we need some of this in our house. Because that's going to lower the church uh, strength by 50%, which is huge, boys. Absolutely huge. Oh my god, we start with 97% success chance. Holy shit, people really want to get rid of the church in this country, don't they? It's also max out our home affairs here. We want to go up to level 4 once we have enough uh, bureaucracy. And we also want to change to guaranteed liberties. It's not so much support for that just yet, but um, hopefully we manage to get some more as we go along in the campaign, right? That was super fast. Holy shit, that was so fast. Alright, now, essentially, it's the same like having state religion. Only difference is we don't have the political strength for the Orthodox Church, which is exactly what we need, of course. And it seems like the French have become a communist nation. Holy mother. Well, that's gonna be interesting. They have a few wars going on as well right now. Okay, looks like uh, German leadership. Actually, it's not the French war. It's the Austrians and the Prussians, which means I might be able to sneak into Austria again. Uh, when is my truce expiring with them? That would be in five months. Let's see how long the war lasts. Depending on how long the war lasts, we might be able to attack them again. Oh my god, they're getting fascist rebelling whilst they're in a process of getting a war with the Prussians. Oh god, this is, this is not gonna end up well for the Austrians, that's for sure. Okay, so we managed to get both the Prussians and the Russians in the war against the Hungarians, which again are joined in by Great Chink for some freaking reason. Now I'm gonna try and get the two remaining states from Austria and then I don't need to attack Austria ever again. Instead, I'm gonna focus my efforts on taking back Dobroja from the Ottoman Empire afterwards. This kind of does depend on uh, these guys not finishing their war anytime soon, which I don't see happening because I think that both sides of that war are not attacking each other for some reason. That's why there's little to no change in the borders here for some reason. The bigger question is though, if the fascists manage to win this, what's gonna happen to Australia-Hungary afterwards, right? Let's go, baby! That's the Romanian war cry, in case you're wondering. That's uh, what everybody does. And of course, they are once more in default. They've been in default this entire freaking run, haven't they? <laughs> okay, we got the war goal, boys. We're gonna also take East Galicia for some extra war score. The Russian are focusing on Qing, so that's pretty good. And they're making progress on Qing, actually. So Qing might even peace out super fast here, which is obviously exactly what we want from Qing. So cute seeing the Romanian flag taking over Austria-Hungary's lands. Makes me proud. Makes me very, very proud. Look at them go man 82 difference here and the uh alxai on front holy mother are the chinese troops actually made out of paper that's the real question if you ask me and they just peaced out nice well disaster has kind of struck because the russians peaced out but fortunately the germans which have just formed north german uh, federation the former prussians are still in it and they're helping me get a lot of war scores so we should still be able to win the war eventually the austrians finished their real little revolution there so um i don't know what happened actually Actually, did they become fascist or something now? No, I don't think they did. I guess they won the freaking revolution then. I have no idea what happened. Oh, we can stomp out the monarchists. So the landowners lose a lot of horrible ideologies. It means that we might even be able to use the monarchists later down the line now. Hey, we got guaranteed liberties, which means we start off already with minus 15% radicals from standard of living and plus 15 loyalists from standard of living. So now this eventually, once we get it up to level five, is going to give plus and minus 25% which is a huge freaking difference, boys. We just need more uh, bureaucracy, I guess. And we just got our provinces back from the Austrians. Two more and two more to go. Basarabia and Dobroja. Let's check the Ottomans out. So the Ottomans have 17 million GDP, almost half of our GDP, and double the population, though. So these still are pretty strong. They have a pretty massive army. 162 is not nothing. So we're gonna have to build up more unit status for sure. We've basically just been relying on alliances this whole freaking time, which is really not the way to go let's 
face it. Well, what do you know, it's time for yet another revolution in South Germany, namely Austria. This time, I, I really don't give any sort of a schnapps about this area, so they can do whatever they want, really. My main focus is the Ottomans here, which is why I'm gonna change my uh, declared interest into the Balkans, just in case we might want to release some nations away from the Ottoman yoke. Say, make those Bulgarians free again, right? And can you guys calm down with your dumb revolution? Imagine trying to revolt about secret police. I'm giving you liberties and you want me to bring back the secret police that bullies you. Are you kidding me right now, population? And there's a million of them that are loyal for this crap. Come on. The best part about having public schools is that we get the assimilation rate and we also lost the uh, extra support for the clergy once more. Now, we do have quite a few other cultures in our country. We have 1.6 million Hungarians, 580,000 Ukrainians, 560,000 South Germans, some Serbians, Askenazis, and so on. So we want to make all of these people Romanian because we're trying to stay with the national supremacy. We're not going to switch away to racial segregation or cultural exclusion since we're not going to be expanding too much outside of the historic Romanian borders. So having national supremacy actually gives us more loyalists, less radicals, as long as everybody is Romanian in our country. Time to also change from uh, homesteading to commercialized agriculture. So we're basically moving up in the world of uh, legislation that is a faux show and i'm thinking to start electrifying my nation i do still have however quite a little bit of population 1.1 million now that i can hire so i don't need to focus on electricity just yet i can just keep on building the buildings i need and once i'm lacking population i switch over to the electric grid i think that might be the play here right now i need to focus on giving everybody jobs so they stop being as disloyal as they are dude we just surpassed austria hungary in gdp and in standard of living. What? Oh my lord, we have become the new great power of the Balkans, haven't we? I'm actually having so much fun in this run. Like, I'm not expanding too much around the world, but just seeing me grow from that little schnapple dupe that, we'll that I was at the start into this is just delicious, man. We're so close to getting that freaking achievement. I can smell it, boys. This shouldn't really be a hard achievement, in my opinion, though, because it's, it's not that hard to do this. It is a little bit RNG, of course, but it's not as hard, at least not if you know the basic stuff about the economy in this game i guess speaking of do you guys want me to do an economic video or an early industrialization video because i think a lot of people are actually struggling with that aren't you now that we have a pretty stable economy and we've uh stabilized the newly conquered areas we can start ramping up our production so i'm gonna start building more construction sectors as consequence let's get another four over in banat we also need to get more technology to unlock more investment levels for education health system and home affairs another day another the war now we're attacking the ottoman empire we have 61 advantage over them in this particular front with just 30 units granted we are recruiting some more artillery and uh, lancers and a few more infantry but the reality is that we do have better units than the ottomans have and we also have some support from the russians of course good old og russia bestest of uh, buddies of um, of romania clearly now that being said i am gonna have a proper army once i finish recruiting this i'm likely gonna recruit an extra 10 afterwards i would say is a good amount Yep, so we can have um, 40 or even 50 skirmish infantry should be fine for this uh, engagement at least. The war target is going to be Dobroja as well as we're giving the Russians the province of Kars. Otherwise, they would not have accepted to join us against the uh, Ottomans. So we kind of had to give them that, of course. And we also just got laissez-faire, one of the best economic policies. Now, that means we got 75% private construction allocation, one extra company. We can subsidize infrastructure, trend, trade centers, and the best part is that we get 20 25% capitalist investment pool contribution efficiency and for the shopkeepers as well. Only negative side is that we cannot downsize non-government buildings. So whatever has been built, we cannot destroy it anymore, which has the potential to ruin some of the uh, productivity for some buildings. So we got to be really careful, make sure that we only have the buildings that we need to have in the provinces that we need to have. Now, let's see what is going to be our third. I think um, infrastructure might not be so bad or steel syndicate of Valencia is pretty good to not only because of the construction efficiency but most importantly we're gonna get the throughput bonus for the steel mills then again the loyalist from standard of building is awesome and the throughput for glassworks and furniture manufacturers might help our economy more so i'm gonna go for the uh combined romanian home good combine and maybe in the future i might switch over to the steel one let's see how it goes i guess now we also did assign here as our strategic objective the province of dobroja to ensure that our units are going to be attacking there and i want to do a little bit of a small tutorial
tutorial for the armies because I know I haven't uh, released my army composite, my army guide yet, which I will be releasing soon, by the way. So first and foremost, guys, make sure that your army has a good balance of artillery, cavalry, and infantry. Don't have only one of these. Make sure you have a little bit of everything with obviously more infantry than the other two combined. That is a must. Make sure you have enough generals so you don't go uh, over your command limit with the amount of units that you have. But then most importantly, you go to your mobilization tab and you have here a few options you can do for each army separately. Now for the second remaining army, which is the only remaining army really, we can, for example, give them extra supply rations. That's going to give extra offense and defense percentage, but it's going to cost us a few things here. Of course, uh, it, the radios, tanks and oil do not affect because it only is a percentage. So if there is any oil, radio or tank that they already are sucking up, it's going to increase the amount that they suck up. So right now it would really just be uh, ammunition, small arms, artillery and grocery. So we're going to activate that actually. We could also give chocolate, tobacco, liquor, and I'm going to give the liquor for that matter. Tobacco also. Sugar, I don't have any, so I'm not going to give the sugar. However, I could do force march, which I don't really need, or activate rail transport. Now, I am struggling a little bit with my engine output, so I'm not going to do this yet. Same goes here. Is already, I'm giving out extra liquor, so it's fine. Eventually, we're going to be able to get machine gunners, chemical weapons, and flamethrowers, all of which will add a lot of bonuses, but they do cost oil, fertilizer, and ammunition and small arms. They are 100% worth it though. Keep that in mind. When you are at war, it is vital that you have these to uh, get a little bit of an extra oomph over your enemies, essentially. I mean, look at this, boys. We're absolutely shnababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
like uh, Valachia and Dobroja have the Danube River which offers an extra 5% mappy so building stuff in these states makes a massive difference helps you out so much more to spread that love around your country that being said we do need more transports to spread that love so uh, let's queue up some of those when we started this we had zero companies now we are already on our freaking fourth company and that's gonna be of course the uh, steel syndicate of Valachia the one and only we're slowly becoming a uh, steel behemoth on our own wait a second wasn't France communist a few moments ago did they just go back to being a kingdom after how what's going on in the French kingdom bro I need answers right now a real triumph for Romania as we have uh, we've uh, withstood the tides of socialism apparently now we also need to get rid of the uh, pebrine epidemic which is destroying our silk production and uh, yeah we're gonna have to uh, focus on this a little bit I guess I'm really trying very hard to uh, gun for protected speech we have the max amount of uh, innovativeness that we can have because we built up the max amount of universities required but getting protected speech we get an extra 25% technology spread so we get the spread of technology a little bit faster meaning we catch up with the rest of the European powers especially from the military uh, perspective because we have actually even gotten better technology than most Europeans when it comes to production and when it comes to social stuff but militarily we have been lagging behind a little bit because we haven't focused on it too much. Huzzah! We've gotten protect and speech in Steinen. Now let's see if there's any other legislation we need to pass. Probably should, you know, not have child labor allowed. <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, that's gonna be really hard to pass. Holy mother. The industrialists, which is basically my entire government here, since they've got 47% clout, kind of want children to be working in the factory. So I guess, sadly, that's how it's gonna be for this entire run then, because I'm gonna keep the industrialists in charge. Kind of interesting how we have so much support for technocracies. Um, should I just go technocracy basically for the memes? Would that be really bad if I do it? W would I be a bad person if I go for this just for the- You know what? Why don't we just have technocratic Romania in this front? I feel like that's a- it, it rhymes nicely, doesn't it? And tell you what, we're gonna survey for a skyscraper that's of course going to be in Valachia since that is where majority of our uh, bureaucratic buildings are, let's face it. Wait, we're actually number three worldwide when it comes to standard of living with Champasak and Switzerland being above us. So basically Romania is essentially the greatest nation in Europe because we all know Switzerland's really just a bunch of aliens in disguise trying to pretend that they're human but we know you're not. That's why you own all the banks. So just admit it Switzerland. Admit it right now. Herpaderp we are a technocracy. That means we can try and go for command economy in the uh, economic system now if we wanted to. It's not necessary of course. Let's check what's, uh, what's up now. So we've got pretty much all of the stuff that we want to have to be honest with you I don't feel like I want to change anything else here Maybe the child labor thing later down the line we could try and gun for something else better than allowed But 48% kind of screams revolution I'd rather not have to deal with that right now Seems like Valachia is the brand new spot for a uh, skyscraper So we're gonna build that right now in uh, Valachia Boom shakalokados How long is that gonna take? That's gonna take 71 months Okay, I mean uh, weeks That's fine, it's not too long I am surprised that I haven't had a revolution yet and we went up to 32% success chance to uh, formulate the compulsory primate, uh, priv primary school for kids. So fingers crossed it passes through. Let's go ahead and get that extra military research speed next. Oh, anyway, we got some new production methods too. I'm also going to be uh, out clicking a few of these uh, electrical factories. I want to have at least in every single one of my uh, provinces three electrical factories or, elect or power plants so I can start changing to uh, power plant production methods for my um, buildings which is going to seriously wrap up our economy we're gonna go up to a hundred million GDP just from switching to electrical that's how powerful this is we also now have a hundred brigades or battalions in the field so uh, it's safe to say that we can uh, probably hold our own against the Russians since they also have pretty much the same thing and we could call in the Germans right now so I could attack them for Bessarabia but I'm gonna wait a little bit longer I don't necessarily need Bessarabia I have enough population in my lands we still have 700,000 people that are not employed so I need to make sure that I'm uh, maximizing what I have here before I declare on the Russians plus I think I can recruit some more units before declaring to maybe get a little bit of better tech so we have that little extra advantage over them but most importantly I cannot attack because I got great relations so I'm uh, I'm decreasing the relations with them but that takes a while sadly in the game that being said to put stuff into perspective despite being a one two three four five six seven state province we have a higher GDP than the Americans than the Canadians and the Italians 
Italians with our small little ass nation. We're, we're better than these guys here, okay? That talks miles, that talks, okay? Onto its own, it does. So with the compulsory primary school done, we can go up to maximum when it comes to our education system. So that's also going to give us 62% assimilation. Right now, we are assimilating people around 1,000 on average, I'd say, uh, per month. So it's not super fast. It's going to be a little bit faster as we uh, get that particular institution more advanced. We've queued up uh, psychoanalysis, but most importantly, we've queued up afterwards Zeppelins, which offer an extra 5% market access price impact and the other two technologies here that lead to macroeconomics. Again, it offers 5% more MAPI. So eventually, we're going to get 100% MAPI with everything that we have right now. And our economy is just going to go into space. That's right. Romania will be into space. It was bound to happen. We got kicked out of the uh, customs union of the Russians. So now we have to survive on our own. It is going to tank our economy slightly, but we'll make it work. Don't worry. We're going to make it work, boyos. I promise you we're not going to get completely schnappled duped here. Let's get weapons from the British and the Russians and the Austrians, I guess. Our biggest issue is going to be wood. That is for sure. Because wood, unfortunately, we don't have too much of in our own country. Let's see how much we could potentially build. We didn't build before too much wood because we were a part of the uh, Russian market, which has the highest amount of wood and the cheapest one. So we really didn't need to worry about wood whatsoever. Now we do. So we're let's just maximize wood as this is the first layer of our economy, essentially, right? It's taking so much longer than I expected it to, uh, to get back on our feet because we didn't have any of the basic stuff. I thought we had some, but we didn't. Not only did we have to build wood, we had to build the freaking livestock ranches and everything else. And we're still working on it. But yeah, uh, getting kicked out of the... We, we depended on the Russians way longer than we should have. We should have left that market a while back. To be fair, though, I'm, I'm playing this run and I'm watching Netflix at the same time. So in my defense, this is me just having fun and enjoying the game. Didn't really try to min-max it too much. I don't even remember if this is the fifth or sixth uh, company that we're establishing. I guess the fifth one. But yeah, we're going for the uh, metal syndicate. And I just noticed, hold on a second here. We have issues. We don't have enough productivity for the uh, home goods combined. Okay, well, we have to fix that in that case, boyos. Productivity four to seven three. Alrighty, let's see what's going on with that. We got more oil in Romania, in uh, Moldova. Okay, cool. So I don't get this. I have zero furniture manufacturers here, which is destroying my uh, my company. What the fuck? What? I am so confused right now. Is this a bug? I'm gonna out click one, see what happens then. Maybe after I get one actually in there, it's not gonna... Don't I already have in uh, Moldova? No, that's the only one. That is really just weird. That is actually just weird right there. I don't know what to say. Now, when it comes to our army, we do have 160,000 units and they're all skirmishers, shrapnel infantry, whilst the Russians, if we click on their states, go to barracks, go to the armies, and then click information, they still have predominantly line infantry, and we're also gonna juice up our army, so we're gonna be easily able to win our engagement against them. After a little bit of extra time, a few years have passed, we managed to get ourselves to 18 standard of living, becoming the greatest nation when it comes to standard of living. However, we're going to be joining the customs union of the French because they would love to have us in. There's an acceptance uh, rate of zero, which is enough for me, really. And as such, our standard of living is going to go down a little bit, but we are a part of the uh, French market now. So we went up to 90 million GDP, significantly more. That also means that we're going to need to build up some more stuff around here to boost up our economy. And a lot of the uh, really high demand stuff before, like the tooling workshops, are not so much in demand anymore because there's a lot of tooling workshops in the French market itself. However, not to fear, we're still going to use these uh, for our market once we leave the French market, which is going to be in a few years. We're just temporarily in it because they have rubber. We have no rubber right now. So after the war with the Russians, we're going to be attacking some African areas to get some rubber for ourselves. We do seem to have a high shortage of uh, motor industry, so we're going to max out to 51 in Moldova, the motor industries, and we're going to get some more railways around our country as well. There's a massive demand for lead too, so let's uh, max out the lead we have in South Transylvania, I guess. Same goes for most of these. Furniture, textile, food industries, all of these are in huge demand, and it seems like tooling is actually going back up, so I guess that was just temporary for us just joining the uh, market. It had to have a few weeks of uh, readjusting to the new demand and uh, so on of that particular
the market. And since the French do have a lot of extra rubber, we changed over to Elastic's uh, production method for our textile mills, which is going to bring in a ton more income in the process as well. And we are right now the only producer of telephones and uh, they are in massive demand. So uh, we're going to be spamming quite a little bit of telephones right now. We're going to make sure that the entire French market is buying our telephones and making us ridiculously rich in the process. Holy shit, the buy order is insane. We have a buy order for this of 1,500. What? Brother, 1,600 buy order actually from population consumption alone. Oh my god. Did we just... We did... What? We were so close to passing that legislation and it failed? Excuse me, bro? What? Oh my god, that is just disgusting absolutely disgusting yeah we're also going to be spamming a lot more of these in that case so uh let's go ahead and build i don't know 20 more i guess and we also just got radio so let's switch on over here to radio production we're doing this for two reasons our armies are uh using up a lot of radios for the siege artillery and we don't have any production of it right now so we need to get some production of that going and the second reason is that it's actually pretty high demand so overall getting those radios is going to make us even richer as it is hey we got a nice bonus of 50 percent radio boost output for five years that's really nice too and we have 77 percent uh endorsement for women's suffrage that is going to be absolutely super fast to pass 56 percent success chance from the get-go boys holy mother of god i just noticed guys check out the price of oil right now oh my god dude 80 freaking eight for oil what okay we need to build more oil rigs <laughs> everything is just in such freaking high demand it's ridiculous we're also going to change one of our companies to the uh Stella Romana, which is our oil extraction throughput company. So it's going to give a lot more than 20% because it also gives from here. Yeah, we, we need that oil because oil is in extremely high demand. And right now we are the only oil producer in the world for some reason. So it do be like that. Finally, everybody's suffering equally in our country. No longer are just men suffering. Now women are suffering too, as it should be, which equates right now to another 15% workforce ratio and dependent enfranchisement plus 33%. I also have started building another 10 electronics uh, or electrics industries in uh, Banat because the ones in Banat are going to be producing radios alongside telephones. The ones in Valencia will only be producing telephones because we have a very high demand and need for telephones phone so if i was to switch here to radio production i'd be losing a lot of money since i would be producing less telephones more radios and i honestly don't need that many radios 10 electrics industries on radios is enough to sustain my military whilst 50 which is what's going to be here 51 is going to be the amount that we need on uh, telephones to just sell off to the uh, general public as well as use for our government administration buildings to get enough bureaucracy to sustain our country and now that that's done look at that effect there we're actually making a lot more from the banat uh, factories because they're producing radios which is in demand but that's going to slowly start uh, going to start to trickle down as we're producing more radios and telephones here since uh, 10 factories on this is probably more than enough yeah there you go so roughly around three four factories is what i need on radios now that i think about it okay i might do another five factories in bekesh and leave those on radios and just make a hundred and two factories in banat and valencia on telephones because again i'm the only producer of telephones in the world right now another reason why i'm able to play all the way to 1936 in this particular run and why i'm kind of testing it out as well is because a lot of changes have been made to the game and the fact that you are allowed to assimilate cultures a lot faster now so if we go to our culture map mode we have pretty much mostly romanians in all of our country we only have 600,000 ukrainians that's mostly from migration as is with the south germans and the turks and the swedes and so on mostly from migration there you go originally we had like a million or something hungry Hungarians and it went down to 42,000 because of the assimilation factor right so that's really really good it changed the late game so much because assimilating all of these cultures means that to uh, it's it's a lot less pops and the pops was the main reason why I was getting laggy in the late game without so many different pops with only one more homogenous pop that is the same culture the same religion you get less lag in the later part of the campaign so you can play up until 1936 without issues and we just managed to get voting phase for graduated 
taxation, that's going to boost up our economy by how much? By 64,000 just from passing it. And yes, we are on very low taxes and we're still getting 700,000. If we were to switch to very high taxes, it would be basically 1 million extra, but we don't need to. Very low means we get very high standard of living in exchange, making us the second world uh, wide standard of living nation. Let me guess the Swiss are first again. Yeah, the Swiss don't count. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. Swiss are not actual uh, humans. Okay, just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. All right. Now let's uh, set up our designated strategic objective of Banat because we have the first world war starting out here for the province of Basarabia. <laughs> We've got the Germans, the French, the Austrians and the Romanians. So historical uh, allies, of course, against the Italians, the Qing, the British and the Russians. I I I'd say if we switched one nation around there, it would actually be the exact first world war. But hey, we'll make do with what we have, right? That's uh, that's all we should be doing here. I'm going to queue up a lot of munition plants because we're going to need a lot of uh, war supplies during this war. Let me also go to my army here, mobilization, and I'm actually going to give some extra stuff for them. I'm going to activate liquor because we have a lot of liquor. I'm also going to get the tobacco. We have a lot of that. Sugar, we have a lot. Extra supplies, of course. Recon, we have because we have uh, both automobiles and we also have um, oil input, but it's going to turn off uh, our organization by 50%. So uh, we need to make sure we don't turn this uh, uh, on or off again. Otherwise, it will reset the organization level of our army. It's okay now because we have a few more uh, days to go, weeks to go before the war starts. If we did this during the war, it would be an issue, however. So keep that in mind. Same with this one. We're activating rail transport and it's also lowering our organization. So we have 25 organization. But by the time the war starts, there you go. It should slowly, slowly be going up. Australian mass migration. Oh my God. Even Australians want to live in our country. It's the actual opposite of what's going on IRL, essentially. <laughs> Romanians want to live in Australia, but in this game, nope, no sir E. It's the Australians that want to live in Romania. 27,000 of them have already migrated and more are on the way. 50,000. Okay, that's a lot of Australians we're getting right now, boys. Should I be worried about all these Australians coming in here or is this a good thing? What do you guys think? <laughs> ah, yes, Russia with 77 million population and 60 million GDP compared to our 138 million GDP with just like, what, seven states? <laughs> Let me guess, they still have line infantry? I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure they still have line infantry. Let's check. They got line skirmishers, but mostly line and mobile artillery. Okay, yeah, buddy. All right. We have already a 47% front advantage over them. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I forgot. The Germans probably have the same units as me, don't they? Let's check. Holy shit, the amount of manufacturers here. What? What is the GDP here, man? 10 million. That's not too much. But our capital's GDP is 53 million. Our capital's GDP alone is bigger than the GDP of uh, Belgium and the the Dutch or Holland apparently it's called I don't know and just 10 million less GDP than the entire GDP of Russia in just our capital what the hell man <laughs> and our capital standard of living is almost 20 as well holy snaps we have actually won the run in my opinion we've actually won this our people are the happiest our country is the greatest in the world for sure and they're fearful they should be fearful bro this is gonna be a snap and doob -doo -boo war against them oh 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 what's going on here it's a little bit of up and down between the uh, Germans and the Great Qing units. Let me guess, Great Qing have what? What kind of units? They got irregulars. No, they have line and skirmish. Oh, actually, Qing has better units than Russia. What? And after a little bit of trouble, we did defeat the uh, Qingian troops. I think one more battle here and we get the war goal, which means we get the uh, passive war score reduction for them faster now. Oh, we did get half the war score, actually. We just need one more battle. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a really cheeky move here. I'm going to create a secondary army, get a general in there, and I'm going to transfer from my main army one unit. That's it to the secondary army here. There we go. Boom, shakalokos. Confirm. And guess what I'm going to do, guys? And now these guys, we're going to send over here because the uh, Italians have nobody on that front. We should be able to advance a little bit more or at the very least break away some of their units in the other area there. And when they go there, we're going to start sending units to this front and that front and so on, essentially to just uh, split apart the enemy troops, make them go to fronts that are not as vital as the main fronts are. Oh, we are making a massive of leeway even the austrian troops are significantly better than the uh the german troops the sorry the russian troops the austrians actually have trench infantry so remind me not to fuck around with the austrians anytime soon right wait we have trench right did we not upgrade our troops to trench infantry hold on a second i just realized that. no we do we do we do we do have trench what the hell am i talking about we have the same units as the austrians can someone actually explain to me why the french have 1000 battalions that they can conscript but only 162 actual standing units like who the hell thought that this was a good 
idea of freaking Kingdom of France. I'm also going to attempt to get multiculturalism, simply so I have literally the best legislations around, because right now we got everything that's good. We got commercialized agriculture, graduated taxation, free trade, less affair, universal suffrage, we decided to go for, state atheism, bureaucrats, uh, guaranteed liberties, primary school, women's suffrage, protected speech, so we actually have the best laws, with the exception of multiculturalism. We might as well get that before we finish off this run and call this one of the greatest runs ever. And we just got it, boys. The Shtap Tataromene, the achievement that we wanted to get, and we also got humiliation on uh, the uh, the Russians. Let's check it out, boyos. Let's freaking check it out. Unlock. How was this one a, a difficult one? Yeah, it was the hard achievement. The Shtap Tataromene. We managed to get this by starting as one of the weakest nations and getting all of their cores once we form Romania. Actually amazing, and look how beautiful Romania looks on the map. 141 million GDP, but now that we have all of Romania, by the end of the session, we're gonna just go going to completely raffle stomp and just get more GDP than any other nation in the world since we have all the lands that we actually need and these lands here bring us 1.5 million more population which uh, results into 300,000 population that we can use in our factories now. One major issue we have in Basarabia is that we don't have any uh, electrical factories there or we only have three of them from the ones we had before but now it's expanded so we need more electrical factories in there. And let me see who I can attack. I could probably attack attack Benin now that I think. Yeah, why not, man? Screw it. Let's go uh, set up our interest here. We can attack Benin and then Sokoto so we get some uh, rubber production. I do think that there is rubber there, right? Let me check. Uh, production map mode. Yep. Nope. Actually, Benin doesn't have. Is there any potential for it? There is potential for it in Sokoto, not in Benin. Okay, so maybe not attack Benin then. Actually, the Ethiopians might be an easy target. So, Changius Maximus, Romanian Ethiopian Wars. Historical, of course, clearly. And yes, we we just got to be the first standard of living in the world temporarily the swedes i mean the the What the fuck just happened? Okay, well, I'm clearly not gonna have the world's first GDP anymore. Super Germany just formed by the AI. What? <laughs> Oh my god, 78 million population, 269 million GDP, holy shit. Basically a thousand battalion. <laughs> this is actually just disgusting. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Let's see what we're gonna go for here. <laughs> should we go for the forestry because we do need some more wood? Or should we go for more oil comp- What? I never knew we had two of these. Migration attraction and more throughput for the oil rigs. Yes, please. Hell to the yes, please. Okay, boyos, uh, time to- attack i think i'm gonna attack isak or Ausa. that would be my best choices and our economy is just exploding guys i mean i got 400,000 profit i'm making with very low taxation i know what you're thinking you should just build more construction sectors the truth is though that it's not gonna make much of a difference since i don't have the population to work anymore i've gotten the best production methods i just need more pox and yes we're also middling 19.3 now first worldwide still the swiss have not yet taken our uh, throne the swiss are actually third after pontianak and the germans are very down there 10th with 16 okay so we're still better than them okay shut up even though they got double our freaking gdp right now but yeah we need population right now we only have a hundred thousand peasants that can work that's it it's really not much we're still getting a lot of migrants though so if we go over here we're getting a lot more ukrainians russians a lot more after the war galicians and so on turks have started migrating even more australians swedes and so on i do have to say one thing though this is my most fun campaign like out of all the vicky 3 campaigns i had i know i probably said this a few times in the video but i've had so much freaking fun in this one it's insane i <laughs> think i'm gonna do more uh 1836 to 1830 uh to 1936 campaigns just the full thing in one video even though it's a little bit of a longer video it's a fun video it's an actually fun video or better better said it's a fun recording time for me not i don't know if you guys enjoyed the video or not that's a different story altogether right and since we did get multiculturalism i'm gonna try and gun for workers protection this is is going to give my uh, workers 15% minimum wage at the uh, level one so as we progress we're gonna get a lot more minimum wage which means our standard of living is going to skyrocket and that is the goal right there right okay time to do a vecla naval invasionus let's send our secondary five battalion strong troopers in here which should be enough for the invasion they only have one unit uh, that is it so jesus mother the difference is so huge now we got 20 standard of living the second afterwards the swiss have two less standard of living compared to us that is a massive massive deal right there hey we got uh 
another achievement. Surf's up. Okay. Cool, cool. Starting as a nation with serfdom, enact the workers' protection labor right. Right. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Isn't this an achievement from E4 as well as uh, Hawaii? Or at least the icon is the same, isn't it? Let's also get old age pension. We're actually going full-on socialist here, aren't we? And our very first colonial possession has arrived. One of many to come. Uh, let's send our, our units over here now because we're going to be attacking everybody in Ethiopia. <laughs> Ethiopia is going to be little Romania in a few moments. I think overall there's like, what, five million population in Ethiopia. More! There's like 10 million population in Ethiopia. Oh my god, that's actually gonna fix all of my issues, isn't it? Wait, me attacking Ethiopia, does that actually make me the Italy of my particular game? I, I, I guess it does, doesn't it? And the world's fastest war is over. Belarusian mass migration. Hell yeah! I love it when I see those mass, mass migrations popping off and coming into my lands. I need them pops, baby. I need them. Full be mass mig. Okay, everybody's mig mass migrating to me now. What? I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm definitely not complaining here. Paved roads. Let's see if getting paved roads is actually going to show on the map paved roads or not. That's uh, a curiosity I've had for quite a while. Another day, another ver. Oh my god, the fluctuations are freaking insane, dude. We went from minus 100,000 to 400, now to 200. What the hell is going on here, man? All right, let's see who we're going to attack next. Amhara seemed like a good target. 2.5 million population is real juicy. Holy shit. These guys gave up without a freaking fight? No way. No actual freaking way. They did, didn't they? Barana just backed down. Bro, bro. Are we really reached that level that we're so strong that people are backing out of, uh, out of a fight with us? Really? A lot of of angry people though we got four million ethiopians that are not really happy with us having captured them but it's fine i don't give a shit now we're gonna be attacking the rest of the ethiopians here to get all of them under our control okay now we got paved roads but i'm not seeing any paved roads here boys i'm seeing railways still and dirt roads where's my paved roads at bro oh my god are we actually seeing some little romanian troops marching or oh dude that is so freaking cool that is actually so freaking cool i never noticed that little detail bro so the convoys that we have with trade to have soldiers following them dude that is amazing they actually have the trench warfare uniform the world war one un uniform that romania had this got me so excited more than it probably should have okay now that is a big step so the germans want us to change to their customs union we actually have more gdp right now than the french which is our current customs union oh that's a tough one though the french have rubber but since we've been attacking the ethiopians we've actually gotten our own rubber right now our rubber stands at how many we got 64 rubber plantations and growing we're gonna get a lot more than that i think after thinking about this for a second um i'm gonna stay with the french here's why the german market might be bigger but the german market lacks a lot of the resources that i actually want and it would be competing with me for a lot of the other resources that i have like telephones germans are right now the second biggest producer of telephones of automobiles and so on romania is number one germany's number two producer of telephones it's the same case with a lot of things here so no i'm i'm gonna stay with the french and i'm I'm gonna leave the French market after I've gotten Ethiopia, half of Egypt. Well, I'm probably gonna annex all of Egypt, let's face it, and most of the Arabian lands. So I get the extra oil from the Arabian parts. And then maybe I'll even get more GDP than the Germans as consequence. Holy snaps. I almost got 10 million GDP from just switching the production methods in the areas I annexed. I have I forgot to switch some of them. Now after I switched them, 10 million GDP alone from just a couple of clicks. That is ridiculous. Oh no. Oh no. We got compression ignition, boys. Here it goes here it freaking are you guys ready for this are you guys ready for this check it out we're not gonna have enough um oil that's for sure but we're gonna start gunning for some more oil <laughs> We gained freaking 10 million GDP from just another 10 million from just switching to diesel uh, pumps. Yeah, my oil um, demand is freaking massive now, though. Look at that. We're getting from oil 118 to 138. Holy mother. And we're not the only producer anymore. So let's see uh, production map mode. Oh, yeah. Everybody's producing it now. Tri Tripoli is a big producer. Who owns Tripoli? We've also just built enough uh, bureaucratic buildings so we can max out to level 5 all of our institutions institutions that's going to absolutely hugely impact our country increase our standard of living and just uh, boost everybody to the same level all around our nation our colonies in africa our colonies in arabia everybody we had a little bit of a hiatus but we're back to being the world's number one when it comes to uh, our standard of living even though we've uh, conquered lands around here and our economy has clearly decreased a little bit because of it well our standard of living not our economy we still managed to get back up to first place because of all the investments 
investment we're doing in the institutions and everything else, it kind of just evens itself out. We also can get a lot more steel. We need a lot more steel for that matter. So let's get all of these up to 51. We have the population now. So technically we could get more uh, construction sectors, but the truth is we got three years left. So it's not going to make much of a difference. We're also trying to pass the uh, mass conscription legislation, which is going to allow us to get more conscripts and so on. It's not meant necessary, but I need to do something with my legislation right now. I'm not doing anything. So, oh, looks like the British built the Suez Canal, which allows me to get to my colonies in 30 days rather than 90. Massive difference now. All right, we got mass conscription. Also, boys, I'm building up my fleet here. We got some submarines. We got some scout cruisers, which are the best type of uh, light ships that you can have. The submarines are the second best type of support vessel. Of course, the carriers are significantly better, but the submarines do offer half of what the carriers offer, so not so bad overall. And we're not building ironclads just yet. We'll wait until we get dreadnoughts, then we can build some dreadnoughts, I guess. Truth is that with uh, our technology, we did fall quite a lot behind most nations because, well, we started as an insignificant uh, one province, one, one state minor nation, right? So I left uh, the uh, French Customs Union just to see how strong I am by myself without being a part of their customs union and i got 213 million which is actually not so bad if you ask me i feel like that's a uh, fair amount considering we've basically destroyed half of our lower production bases right so <laughs> a lot of this stuff here uh we don't have anyone to sell it to so either we get more population so we sell it to whoever's in our population group or we just um you know join another customs union boys but we only have one year left so i'm not gonna be joining anything else i'm just gonna chill and see what happens in our last year before the end of the campaign wait what oh that's it no no oh no oh i actually was enjoying the game so much man for real that is it we can continue playing actually hold on a second we can continue playing but we would not be getting any achievements would we no it's disabling achievements oh that sucks man hey on the bright side i finally managed to get victorian sentry which i just had to play up until 1936 this is the first time i got it in like one year since the game's out so pretty cool to see right if you guys enjoyed this type of video where we played the whole playthrough in one massive giant video let me know in the comment section i might do some more this was a little bit of a test to see how you guys if you like it or not and hey until the next time check out this awesome germany victoria 3 run and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support